No, guys, I got a prayer shawl. Stop. Just, just put it on your neck. Where's Kimberly? She's not downstairs. Oh, she's not downstairs. Oh, she's not downstairs.
Welcome to Youth Sunday at First Presbyterian Church. As we gather together to worship God this Sunday, let us hear the words of the psalmist. Today's reading will be from Psalms chapter 140, verses 1 through 3. Deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men who plan evil things in their hearts. They continually gather together for war. They sharpen their tongues as a serpent. The poison of asps is under their lips. Please rise for our opening hymn, which will be To God Be the Glory, number 485 in the blue hymnals, located at the end of each pew. often struggle to see God working in our lives, come to this time of confession seeking grace, forgiveness, and strength through God's promises. Let us prepare to confess our sins. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Almighty God, God we, we confess that we have failed, failed against you. We have not taken a look around us to help others who are more in need than we are. We have been selfish and self-absorbed in our work in school. Instead, we should have helped the person in need and gone the extra mile. So, Lord, forgive us and grant us mercy so we can take a look around us and glorify you. Amen. Through the prophet, God assures us, I am the one who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. To the one who is paralyzed, Jesus said, My child, your sins are forgiven. Rise, take up your bed, and walk. Dare to believe that you are forgiven, your sins blotted out and forgotten. Amazing grace has been offered you. Receive God's promise and live. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> <laughs> 
Welcome to First Presbyterian Church on the second Sunday of Lent. We would like to extend a special welcome to those of you worshiping with us by the way of WYED TV. This morning we celebrate Youth Sunday. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to lead this worship service. It's important for all of us to know who our brothers and sisters are in worship. Our friendship pads are located in the pew racks in the center aisle. Please sign and pass the pad along your pew, paying special attention to those in worship with you. If you are a visitor worshiping with us this morning, we encourage you to wear the red visitor ribbon located in the pew racks. An elder will be available <coughs> after worship here at the front of the sanctuary to my right to answer any questions you might have. We would like to call your attention to the Lenten services insert in your bulletin. The drama used during this morning's sermon was taken from The Temptations of Jesus, written by Kurt M. Joseph. After this morning's service, our ministers will be available to greet you in the Balkan Power, a room to my right, to your left, as you leave the sanctuary. There are many concerns and joys this week that are listed in our worship bulletin. Please remember all of our members who are in the hospital. Our moment for mission this morning comes from Stephen Allison and focuses on an earthquake relief offering next Sunday. At this time, we welcome Stephen. Good morning. On January 17th, Southern California was rocked by yet another earthquake. This caused a major disaster along that part of the West Coast. People's homes were destroyed jobs lost, and some of them hurt. The people in that area are now in constant need of our financial aid and support. Presbyterians have a long history of helping people in need. Now our most recent opportunity to contribute help is this disaster in California. It may seem that since you haven't heard anything about it for a while, it means everything is all right. But just because it's not on the front page of the newspaper doesn't mean that it is not important anymore. The people in California are still in bad shape. It takes a long time for the planning and rebuilding of homes. It takes even longer when victims are left with nothing and forced to start over from scratch. These people need our help, not just to get started, but to keep them going. The money we give will be for the lives and well-being of the people. Contributions made will assist in providing medicine, clean water, building materials, and many other things of importance. The Presbytery of New Hope has recently set up a California Earthquake Relief Fund to which the contributions of this church will be added to assist in meeting the needs of the victims of the earthquake. Next week, during the worship service, we will have an opportunity to contribute to this effort. We also ask that you keep these victims in your prayers and concerns as they rebuild and replace all that they have lost. Thank you. Could all the children please come? up front for the moment for children. Good morning. Good, it's good to have all of y'all here. Oh, excuse me. So, okay, today's lesson is, what do you see right here? What? Okay, and what is this black dot on? What is this? Now, what did you look at? What did you see when you first looked at this um, piece of poster board? The black dot? Well, think of this as the body, and this is all the bad things in the body. Why do you think we looked at the um, black dot first? That's right. Well, going out in this week, why don't you try to see less black and more white? Okay, let us pray. Almighty God, help us, help us open our eyes to see the good in everyone we meet and to share the good inside of them 
In your son's holy name we pray. Amen. Okay, you can go back to your moms. Psalms 22, 22 through 31. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the afflicted of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. 
for dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson this morning comes from the book of Romans, chapter 14, verses 1 through 19. Listen now for the word of God. Accept him whose faith is weak, without passing judgment on disputable matters. One man's faith allows him to eat everything, but another man whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The man who eats everything must not look down on him who does not eat, and the man who does not eat everything must not condemn the man who does, for God has accepted him. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To his own master, he stands or falls, and he will stand for the Lord, is able to make him stand. One man considers one day more sacred than another. Another man considers every day alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. He who regards one day as special does so to the Lord. He who eats meat eats to the Lord, for he gives thanks to, the, to God, and he who abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us who lives with, to himself alone, and none of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother? Or why? Why do you look down on your brother? for we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow before me, every tongue will confess to God. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. As one who is in the Lord Jesus, I am fully convinced that no food is unclean. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for him it is unclean. If your brother dis is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not by your eating destroy your brother for whom Christ died. Do not allow what you consider good to be spoken as of evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of the righteous peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ this way is pleasing to God and approved by men. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Amen. Our hymn is number 602, Song of Zechariah, found in the Blue Hymnal.
Be seated. The gospel lesson is taken from the 14th chapter of Mark, beginning with the 32nd verse. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Take, stay there and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that, that if possible, the hour might pass from it. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Not yet what I will, but what you will. He then returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said, Peter, are you sleeping? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Once more, he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough, the hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray that you open our hearts and minds to hear your word through the message we're about to receive. Amen. Good morning. I'm the Reverend Dr. Hezekiah Henze, and I want to thank you for inviting me to bring this morning's message to you. Those of you that were here last week heard Dr. Eller deliver a wonderful sermon about the meaning of Lent. He made several excellent points about how we can observe Lent as a season of preparation for that blessed event called Easter. His sermon saved me a lot of time by preparing you for what I'm going to say today. I remember when we dealt with this scripture back in New Testament 101 in seminary, we learned that one of the most important aspects of preparation is taking the time to examine our lives. That is why I've chosen the title of Take a Look. In fact, this point seems to be paraphrased by a line from our opening hymn. Purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport, when Jesus we see. We need to see Jesus when we take a look at our own lives. So let us take a look at some important parts of the scripture. In verse 33, it says, He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, this hour might pass from him. What a wonderful scene. I mean, there he was in the garden, kneeling before a rock with hands clasped in devotion. Wait a minute. What rock? I don't remember a rock in the scripture. The verse says, he fell to the ground and that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Jesus didn't kneel in devotion. He fell to the ground in anguish wishing that he was not the one chosen to die and asked God to relieve him of his duty. And why do so many people call it a garden? I thought Gethsemane was Hebrew for oil press. If it was a garden, then it probably, the only thing it grew there was olives. Kneeling there in the garden was a great show of faith. You can almost see him looking up into the face of God, a private act of humility, yet done in the presence of his most devout followers. We need to be able to take a look at the face of God and find comfort and assurance as Jesus did. And we need not be ashamed of praying in front of others when we face trials and tribulations. For like our Lord in the garden, we too will be comforted by God in answer to our prayers. But he wasn't comforted by God. 
In fact, there is no response from God at all. Jesus was deeply distressed and troubled, but there is no mention of assurance. We also do not know if he saw God's face, as Mark indicates nothing of God's presence here. So how could Jesus possibly have been comforted and assured? Besides, the Old Testament says in Exodus 33, verse 20, that God states to Moses, but you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. In other words, even if Jesus being divine was looking at God, we as humans could not possibly see his face and live. I agree that we shouldn't be ashamed to pray in front of others, but Mark tells us that Jesus didn't pray in front of John, Peter, and James. He left them behind to watch and went a little further before crumpling on the ground in anguish. Besides, I'm not even sure if seeing God's face is as important as believing in him. How noble it is to pray God's will. Jesus, never thinking of himself, always sought to do God's will and crying out to God as Abba, Father, shows us that he knew and respected God personally. Jesus went to the garden to pray that God's will would be carried out. Quote, thy will be done. We need to find enough faith to follow this example of Jesus and pray with conviction that the ways of God will always prevail. Yes, we should pray that way, but we're more likely to pray like the first part of Jesus' prayer when he says, take this cup from me. After acknowledging my desires and being truthful to God, then my faith should help me follow God's plans even if I can't understand. It's like arguing with my parents over curfew. I always want to stay out just an hour later, but I know I need to sleep in order to function the next day. We argue over which is more important, my sleep or my social life, and of course they always win, which is not unlike what Jesus did. He, did, ended, up going, he ended up doing God's will, just as I obey my parents, but he also let his will be known, as I want my parents to know my point of view. It is also important to take a look at the cup that Jesus refers to in verse 36. I remember doing a children's sermon once about the cup of salvation. And this little boy in the group raised his hand and asked, What's in the cup? Isn't that cute? What's in the cup? <laughs> Jesus prayed that God would take this cup away from him. Don't we do the same thing? Our cup of chores, like mowing the lawn, taking out the trash, the cup of loving our neighbor, much less our enemies, the cup of war, the cup of famine, the cup of pestilence, and the cup of death, the cup of anything that we don't want to deal with. Isn't it understandable that we would want God to take those cups away from us? Well, of course we want our cups taken away, but if we think about it, God already has. God already has taken away the most important cup, the cup of sin and death. Jesus' entire purpose of life on earth was to die for our sins, thereby becoming the savior of every man, woman, and child. By taking our cups and pouring all of them together into one, he followed God's will and bridged the gap between man and God. After praying, Jesus came back and found his disciples sleeping. Following a long, hard day with their bellies full from the Last Supper, they found the temptation of resting their eyes too great to overcome. They had been told to watch and wait, but they ended up sitting and sleeping. No wonder Jesus admonished them by saying, Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. If we can find our garden... If we pray to God with confidence, and if we pray that God's will be done, then we will be able to withstand temptation as our Lord did. Temptation. Now there's an issue we all deal with constantly. Human nature makes it hard not to overcome the desire to sleep. It seems so much easier. I'm tempted every day at almost anything I do. For example, the past couple of weeks, I've wanted to watch the Olympics. Not necessarily a bad thing, but when my priority screamed to do homework, it became a tough choice. And giving in to the temptation to watch the always accessible and totally mindless television is like the temptation to fall asleep that Peter, James, and John faced. 
Both are harmless actions in themselves, but they can also cause results of weakness. Sometimes I think, what's the point of doing all my homework anyway? I've already been accepted to college, so why not let it slide? It's just this once, and so on and so on, until I've talked myself into watching the Olympics. But always in the back of my mind, a little voice is saying, you're going to make it worse for yourself down the road. And it's true. Giving in to temptation of any kind is always going to cause trouble somehow. That is why we must stay awake and listen for God. He helps us choose the right decision, which will lead us on the right path of righteousness. If Jesus was tempted by Satan at Gethsemane, I wonder how he would have responded. I can just see it now. Jesus wearing a simple prayer shawl when Satan struts in with a cane and fancy clothes. Now that I'd like to see. Peter, James, and John, the sorrow in my heart is so great that I can barely stand it. Stay here and watch with me. I will be back in a few moments. Father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. Yet not what I want, but what do you want? Amen. Working late, I see. <coughs> Satan's work is never done. I work late all the time. Hey, kid, how you doing? Pretty good. Hey, don't play games with me. We've been through too much together. You can level with me. You know, when you talk like that, it almost sounds like we are on the same side. It kind of sounds like you generally care about me. You have a great deal of potential. You probably could have been Archangel instead of Gabriel and Michael. Are you kidding? I was the best. Those two couldn't even polish my halo when I had one. And I do care about you. You do, huh? You bet I do. Look, what are you now? 30, 31? I'm 33, actually. Wow, has it been that long? I guess what they say is true. Time flies when you're having fun. It seems like just yesterday that I met you out in the wilderness. It was a long time ago. You have been a worthy opponent, the best I've ever faced. You know what is tragic about all of this? I really like you. You can be a warm, caring person. It's too bad you went bad. Hey, don't feel sorry for me, kid. I made my bed and now I'll lie in it. But it's not too late to change. You've got to be kidding. It's way too late for me. But it's not too late for you. What do you mean? I mean... You're only 33 years old. That's too young to die. Think of all you'll be giving up. I mean, why is God doing this to you? It's not fair. You're a good man. You never hurt anyone. All you've ever done is help people. Everyone who really knows you likes you. I don't know if you've got an enemy in the world. Tell that to Caiaphas, Herod, and Pilate. But they don't know you. If they knew you, they'd be on your side. It's just a shame. You, should have, you could have made a real name for yourself. Now you'll just be another good man who got crushed by the system. I hate to think about it. The price you're going to pay is awful high. I don't think it's fair, and I don't think it's right. I don't think God should place this burden on you. But it is a burden that I have taken on myself. No one forced me. But if God really loved you, he would not make you go through with this. He wouldn't demand your death. It's not fair. Wait a minute. You know, I could help you. How? Look, I know a back way out of here. A back way, huh? Yes, if we hurry, we can get out of here before they ever find you. I'd really like to, but... Well, what's stopping you? We'll be out of here in a flash. Trust me. Peter, James, John, wake up. How could you fall asleep now? I need your help and support. I need your prayers. My spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. Please help me, please. My father, if this cup of suffering cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. Scared, huh? Very. Look, what good is going to come from suffering? If God really loved you, he wouldn't make you suffer. I know that the father loves me. Come on, that doesn't make any sense. You don't bring children into the world to be cruel to them. This is terribly cruel. I can't believe it. And they call me evil. If God is in control, if he is really in control, why is he letting this happen? Because of his love. He's got a funny way of showing it. It's just a form of discipline. I don't believe in it myself. 
Punishment has always seemed so cruel, so unfair. I'm not talking about punishment. I'm talking about discipline. What's the difference? To discipline is to lead children in the right way. Sometimes that requires stern measures. To be disciplined is to be obedient. God calls on us to be obedient, to be disciplined. What does that have to do with your death? I will be taking the discipline that all humanity deserves for their disobedience, for their undisciplined natures. I will pay the price, and then everyone will be free from the power of sin and death. Oh, that's too much of a price to pay, even for you. When you love someone, really love them, no price is too high. I admire your nobility, but you can accomplish much more if we get out of here now. I'm here to accomplish what the Father sent me to do, and that's all. Even if it means your own death? Yes, even if it means my own death. Well, you are more foolish than I thought. You don't have to do what God wants you to do. Assert yourself. Follow me and I will get you out of this. Just throw in your lot with because it will be the end of your life. You mean the end of, the reign, of your reign of terror? I don't know what you're talking about. You're good, really good. What do you mean? I mean all of your concern, your care. It was meaningless. You are a fraud. You fed me that line to keep me from the cross so that you wouldn't lose. You don't care about anyone or anything except yourself. I can't believe how good you are. You acted like you really cared. Hey, you can't blame a guy for trying. Look, you fool, drop it. Give up this noble but misguided fight and join me. Together we can defeat God and take his kingdom by force. We can destroy him. Go ahead and pray if you want to, you fool. You think God is listening to you? You think he cares? God left you to your own devices. He has deserted you. Come on, they're almost here. We could still make it. If God really loved you, he wouldn't put you through this. Come on. Where are you going? You're going the wrong way. Peter, James, John, get up. The hour is at hand. Here's my betrayer. I don't believe it. What an idiot. I gave him a way out. Come back, you fool. Calm down. Don't get excited. You're still the best. But what if he continues to resist? I don't have much time left. You always work best under pressure. But what if he makes it? What if he can withstand me? Don't think like that. Don't worry. If he withstands you, you can still get even. How? By taking as many of them with you as you can. Maybe that's the way it happened, maybe not. But either way, we know Jesus never gave in to Satan's temptations because he did go to the cross and he did die for us and God's will was done. If this sermon seems simple, that's because the message is simple. The bottom line is, like these weak, tired, human disciples, we too need to hear and follow the instructions of Jesus when he says, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Now that's more like what the Gospel Mark tells us. That's it. That's the message. We need to take a look at the Gospel message and relate it to our own lives. When the kingdom of God comes, we need to be ready like Jesus by being awake and faithful rather than being like the, like the disciples who fall asleep in their human weakness. As certainly as Jesus spent time in the garden preparing himself for his death, we need to spend time in Lent preparing ourselves for his death and resurrection. Therefore, my friends, if the season of Lent is to have any meaning at all, then each one of us must spend time in prayer and preparation as we look forward to the hope and promise of resurrection at Easter. Amen. Amen. Having heard the gospel both read and proclaimed, let us now stand together and say what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. <laughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. 
he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us join together now in prayer. Almighty God, thank you for your son, Jesus, who was tempted yet did not sin. As we look at his life and teachings, let us learn to follow you more closely. Teach us to be stronger when temptation comes our way and to help and comfort those around us when they go through hard times. O oh Lord, be with the world leaders as they are faced with international issues every day. Let them work together towards peaceful agreements. Be with the people around the world who are victims of wars, earthquakes, starvation, and violence. We ask your special blessings on the families touched by the violence in Israel on Friday. Help them to find peace in you, though their lives are surrounded by war. Be with our community and with our church. Let us grow together in you as we learn more about your unfailing love and grace. Be with the family and friends of Mrs. Betty Williams, and Mr. David Chambers as they suffer the loss of their loved one. Help us to show them our sympathy and understanding as they go through this hard time. And be with us in all our joys and happinesses, for we know that all good things come from you. Help us to share our happinesses with others and to spread the story of your son, Jesus, who came into the world to show us how to live and to teach us to love others as ourselves. He died for us on the cross and saved us from our sins so that we might have eternal life in you. And help us to pray in the words of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, let us bring our tithes and offerings before the Lord.
Let us pray. God, please lead us to better serve you. Teach us how and where to use our gifts to you. We confess that we do not always give as much as we should. Let us work on this. May our offerings reach where we ourselves cannot go. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 81, Out of the Blue Handle, Lord Who Without Forty Days. Our next hymn will be number 84 in the cross of glory in the cross in the cross of Christ I glory number 84 in the blue hymnal And now if we can sing hymn number 80, Jesus Walked This Lonesome Valley in the New, in the new Blue Hymnal. the 
way, the youth loves these hymnal books. We love singing at them. <laughs> this is why we're singing so many of these. <laughs> charge this morning comes from 1 Corinthians 16, verses 13 and 14. Be watchful, stand firm in your faith, be courageous and strong, and let all that you do be done in love. Now hear the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> 